nanohub.org. You can follow along with this presentation using printed slides from the NanoHub. Visit www.nanohub.org and download the PDF file containing the slides for this presentation. Print them out and turn each page when you hear the following sound. Enjoy the show. In this presentation, I would like to talk about strain layer design through quantum dot TCAT. So I really want to show that NEMO 3D can quantitatively predict Exper or explain experimental data in quite complicated geometries. So the idea is that experimentalists would like to achieve optical emission at 1.5 micron in get to get to the, um, the typical dispersionless fiber propagation. And they would like to do that in a quantum dot system based on arsenides rather than nitrides because the nitrides have growth problems. They have a lot of defects. So there's a, there was a set of experimental data available that I will show in a second. And what we want to do is model a geometry like this that is quite extended, that has 60 by 60 by 60 nanometers. It has roughly 9 million electrons in it. And what we trying to explain is on the bottom right, these black lines where each of these dots on the black line is actually a different device that was grown uh, by experimentalists that have published this result with different, slightly different growth methodologies. And what they are showing here is, is the, show the optical emission wavelength that they measure in their experiments. So the wavelength that's coming out of these quantum dots as a function of indium fraction in this buffer layer. So they grew indium arsenide dots, and then they overgrow these indium gallium, uh, uh, these quantum dots with an indium gallium arsenide buffer layer. And these quantum dots are five nanometer tall, and they did a couple of experiments, and I'm going to focus on the uh, experimental data where they grew the buffer layer to be the same height as these quantum dots at five nanometers and they varied the indium concentration in these buffer layers. So if indium is zero, then basically this buffer isn't there because there's this gallium arsenide buffer around it. And then you ramp up the indium concentration. And then about now two years ago, my student Usman walked into my office and said, look, I can overlap experiment and theory. Here's my red line. I just stick this into NEMO 3D I don't modify any material properties that we have published, the tight binding properties that we had published before. And I'm overlapping experiments. And he said, Look, let's go and publish this. I'm like, why? Well, first we have to understand why we overlap the experiment. Because NEMO 3D is not yet a TCAD tool where you can use it as a black box and believe everything that comes out, right? You really when you build tools like this, you really have to understand what the physics is that you stick in and what is happening. So then it took us about three months to figure out what are all the details of why we're overlapping an experiment. Okay? And I'm going to go through some of these details and give you an idea of what's important here. So obviously strain is important, that's clear from the previous presentations. But then there's something interesting, the quantum dot actually changes shape as you overgrow it with a substrate, uh, with a strain layer, which is very un unusual. And w with those two major components, we can explain uh, more intuitively why we overlap theory and experiment. Okay? So I'm going to walk you through some of these things. So if you start out with a quantum dot system that is not overgrown, with a capping layer and you plot the hydrostatic strain and the biaxial strain, you see that the hydrostatic strain is roughly confined to the inside of the dot. So it seems like hydrostatically this quantum dot feels like it's being squeezed from the, uh, yeah, squeezed from the outside. And it doesn't get to push out against the outside, right? The indium arsenide doesn't seem to push homogeneously in all directions against the outside and it feels squeezed. In the biaxial strain component, that's not quite clear, uh, quite as nicely. It seems there is a large uh, biaxial um, compression 
here in uh, or expansion in this uh, in the center of the dot and there's striations it's not homo homogeneous and also the dot pushes vertically biaxially right but laterally it doesn't get to push a whole lot but there's some strain fields that are going laterally so you can see that by these yellow lines here that go laterally now if you put in a capping layer that has 18% uh, uh, indium in it, you see number one in the strain fields, you see the disorder, because it's a random alloy that you put down. Right? It's not a homogeneous material that is being put down, but it's a random alloy of indium gallium arsenide. What you see is that uh, on the hydrostatic pressure, nothing much seems to change, but in the biaxial uh, strain, it seems like at least these striations, that inhomogeneous strain inside the quantum dot seems to vanish a little bit. And if you ramp, out, ramp up the indium concentration to 40 percent, seem, it seems that the, the biaxial strain inside the dot seems to vanish, uh, to be very homogeneous now. And you also see the biaxial strain expanding further into this plane. You see more blue here. Uh, in, the, in the lateral plane on the uh, biaxial strain versus here you saw more yellowish which is a lower strain value, right? So yellow is like 0.05 in the biaxial strain and now you see more of light blue which is more 0.1 uh, okay so it seems like the biaxial strain in the plane is increasing you can show this uh, in, in cut lines, if you now stay vertically cut through these quantum dots, the hydrostatic pressure in the system strain just changes slightly, not a whole lot, and it gets to be a little bit smaller as you ramp up uh, the concentration of indium. And in the, in the vertic for the biaxial strain in the same direction, you see that your, the strain inside of the quantum dot is relaxed, as you see the at least the homogeneous stuff, inhomogeneous strain you could see in the, in the contour plots, but it's really also changing the strain inside. And it seems to be relaxing the strain on top and the bottom as well. It goes down outside of the quantum dot. So that has consequences now on the band edges, similar to the presentations we had seen before. You can translate that now by looking at the, the band edges, the conduction band edge as cut vertically through the quantum dot, in the middle of the quantum dot. And you see as the band edge, as the indium concentration uh, is ramped up from 0 to 0.4, you see the conduction band edge going down inside of the quantum dot. Okay? You see the heavy hole bands going up, and the light hole bands actually going down. So the light hole bands again move differently than the heavy hole bands and they move down. And effectively what you see here, the conduction band going down and the heavy hole going up, you see the band gap getting narrower, which is what you want to have for getting to larger and larger wavelengths, which is making the gap narrower and narrower. 